Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, today we will be discussing the factors behind the growth of nationalist feelings among the Indians. Feeling that we be belong to the same nation. In India, nationalism developed during the period of the British. We will be looking to factors behind the growth of nationalism among the Indians in modern period. Nationalism. There were many factors behind the growth of nationalist feelings among the Indians during the British period. The first and foremost of the reasons was the introduction of the uniform system of administration. Introduction of the uniform system of administration. For the effective exploitation of the Indians, the British is introduced uniform system of administration, be it in general administration or police or judiciary. For example, in land revenue administration they introduced land revenue court. For the land revenue administration became uniform throughout the country because of the introduction of the land revenue court. Indian Police Act Indian Police Act was introduced in 1861 with the introduction of the Indian Police Act 1861 the police administration became uniform across the country. Similar uniform system was also introduced in judiciary as well. Indian Penal Court came into effect in 1860. Criminal Procedure Court of 1882. But these were the administrative measures taken by the British government throughout the country they introduced uniform judicial, civil administration, police and judiciary, judicial administration. But once and this administration uniform system administration was introduced not for the betterment of the Indians, but it was for the effective exploitation of the Indians the British introduced uniform system of administration across the country. What was the effect of the introduction of the uniform system of administration across the country by the British? With the introduction of the uniform system of administration across the country by the British for the effective exploitation of the Indians, the problems of the Indians became common. This was the effect of the uniform system of administration. With the introduction of the uniform system of administration across the country, the problems faced by the people became common. The second factor behind the growth of nationalist tendencies among the Indians was that 
communication network communication network played a vital role in the development of nationalist feelings among the Indians. Telegraph the first telegraph cable was connected connecting Agra Calcutta. It was completed in 1854. First telegraph cable was connected between Agra and Calcutta in 1854. Then railway was introduced in 1853. Lord Dalhousie introduced railways in India. There were four reasons behind the introduction of the railways in India. First reason behind the introduction of the railways in India was it suppress rebellions with the movement of soldiers to the disturbed area very quickly. One of the first reasons behind the introduction of the railway was for the movement of the soldiers to disturbed areas was the reason one of the reasons behind the introduction of the railways. Second reason was commercial. We have already studied that the British is converted India into a colony for the supplier of raw materials to feed machines in Britain and a colony for selling the manufactured products of the British. These raw materials were collected from interior parts of the country and from the interior parts of the country these raw materials were brought to were brought to ports different ports in India. From these ports the raw materials were enshipped to Britain. Likewise the manufactured products from Britain reached it to ports also reached to port. Consequent upon the introduction of the factory revolution, India was converted into a colony for supplying raw materials to Britain as well as a market for selling British manufactured products. From the interior parts of the country, the raw materials were collected and brought it to port, where from these raw materials were enshipped from Indian port to Britain. Then the manufactured likewise the manufactured products were imported from Britain to Indian port. From these Indian ports these manufactured products were to be brought to interior markets. Railway served as a medium chief mode of medium for bringing raw materials from interior parts from interior parts to port. Likewise, manufactured products from ports to markets, railway served as a chief mode for transporting raw materials from interior parts of country to port and from and manufactured products imported from Britain from port to interior markets. This was the second reason behind the introduction of the railways by the British in India. 
third reason was also COVID seal. The third reason behind the introduction of the railways in India by the British was also commercial. British capitalist British capitalists had been awaiting an opportunity to invest their capital somewhere else and to earn huge profits. Railway was considered as a safe haven for investing their capital and to earn huge profits. Hence, for hence the British capitalists exercised pressure on the British government to start railways in India. Railway was started in India as a joint stock company. Joint stock company. The capitalists who deposited their capital for start railways in India. These British capitalists who exercised mounting pressure on the British government to start railways in India so that they could invest their capital and to earn huge profits from it. From it. Railway was started in India as a joint stock company. Fourth reason, fourth reason was also commercial. The merchants in rail goods also pressurized the British government to start railways in India, so that their rail goods could be marketed to India. All the materials for the construction of the railway were brought from Britain to India, including coal till 1860s. Even coal was imported from Britain to India till 1860s. All other rail goods were imported from Britain to India. The merchants in these rail goods also exercised mounting pressure on the British government to start railways in India, so that their rail goods would be marketed in India. For these were the reasons behind the start of the railways in India. For the second reason behind the growth of nationalist movement in India was communication network, telegraph was first of them. Secondly, introduction of the railways. Railway was introduced for the speedy movement of the soldiers into disturbed areas. Second reason was that it could easily transport raw materials from interior parts to ports and British manufactured products from port to interior parts of the interior markets. Thirdly, the British capitalist and merchants in rail goods also exercised mounting pressure on the British government to start the railways. So, because of these reasons, railway was started in India and it was also a joint stock company. Once the railway was started in India, passenger traffic also developed. Passenger traffic also developed. The people began to travel from one place to another place. And it is served as the chief mode of transport. Railway served as a chief mode of transport. to travel from one part of India to another part. Earlier Indians did not have such an opportunity. With the introduction of the railway passenger traffic, people in different parts of the country got an opportunity to meet together. As I have 
already told that because of the introduction of the uniform system of administration, the problems of the Indians became common. With the introduction of the passenger rail traffic, the people in different parts of the country got an opportunity to share common problems with the introduction of the railways. With the introduction of the railways, people in different parts of the country got an opportunity to travel to another part of the country and to share the common problems developed consequent of the introduction of the uniform system of administration in the country. Even the great Mughals had failed to create such an unity in the country which the railways provided. Munamath reason, the, the third reason, the third reason behind the rise of nationalist feeling among the Indians was the introduction of the printing press, introduction of the printing press. With the introduction of the printing press, periodicals and newspapers and newspapers became common. These periodicals and newspapers were published in English as well as in vernacular languages. In 1877, there were 169 vernacular newspapers. Now, we look into the major newspapers published during the period in Bengal, Amrita Basar Patrika, Amrita Basar Patrika, Bengali, Sanjeevini, these were the newspapers published in Bengal. Bomb, next Bombay, Netty Opinion, Maratha, Kesari, these were the newspapers published in Bombay, in Madras, next in Madras. The Hindu, Andhra Patrika, Kerala Patrika, these were the newspapers published in Madras. Next, United Provinces. Hindustan, Asad, these were the newspapers published in United Provinces. Next in Punjab, Tribune, and Akbar e Aam. Akbar E arm. But these were the newspapers published during this period. In 1877, there were 169 vernacular newspapers in the country. What purpose did the newspapers and the journals serve? Through the newspapers and the journals, the educated Indians articulated the common problems of the people and shared it. But these newspapers and journals were a powerful medium through which the common problems of the Indians 
were articulated and shared. It resulted in the development of nationalist tendencies among the Indians, since the problems of the people across the country became common. The fourth reason behind the rise of nationalist feeling among the Indians was introduction of the new educational system. When English East India Company was established in the country, the Britishers did not have any interest to interfere with the cultural and educational affairs of the in native Indians. It was mainly because of fear or adverse reaction from the indigenous society, the English East India Company kept yellow from intervening with the cultural and educational affairs of the Indians. But because of the Christian missionaries, and the evangelicals, utilitarians, they exercised mounting pressure, the Christian missionaries exercised mounting pressure on the British government to intervene in the educational and cultural affairs of the Indians. The main motive behind the Christian missionaries was it to know the history and culture of the people of the country, so that they could easily be converted into Christianity. So, by the main motive behind the Christian missionaries, behind pressuring of the British government to intervene in the cultural and educational affairs was that by understanding or knowing the history and culture of the Indians, they the Hindus and the Muslims in the country could easily be converted into Christianity. Because of the mounting pressure exercised by the Christian missionaries, once British government is start is investment in education. In 1813, the parliament passed the Charter Act. Under the provision of the Charter Act, 1 lakh rupees was provided for the cultural and educational development of the Indians. for the cultural and education development of the Indians through the Charter Act of 1813, an amount to the tune of 1 lakh rupees was provided. Once money was provided, the major question arose was that whether English East India Company should promote Western learning or Oriental learning. Western learning or oriental learning. Western learning means a teaching of European science, European literature through the medium of English is known as Western learning. Oriental learning means teaching of Indian classics, Indian philosophy, Indian literature through vernacular language. It came into known as Oriental learning. Which type of learning should the company, English East India Company should promote? And this one group argued that western learning should be introduced in India. The another group argued that 
oriental learning should be introduced in India. And this matter was referred to Thomas Babington Macaulay. Thomas Babington Macaulay. He was the president of General Committee on Public Instruction. So, what type of education? should English East India company should promote in India, whether the company should promote western learning or oriental learning. Western learning means the teaching of European science, European mathematics, European literature through the medium of English. Oriental learning means the teaching of Indian literature, Indian classics, Indian philosophy through the medium of vernacular language, oriental learning. It came to known as oriental learning. This matter was referred by then Governor General William Bendick William Bendick referred this matter to Thomas Babington Macaulay. He was then the president of the General Committee on Public Instruction. Thomas Babington Macaulay was in favor of the introduction of the Western learning. Macaulay minutes. So, the famous Macaulay Minute of 1835, Thomas Babington, Thomas Babington Macaulay recommended that English Western learning should be introduced in India. Macaulay expressed that with the introduction of the English system of learning, the intention was to create a class of persons, Indians in blood and color, but English in taste, in opinion, in morals and in intellect. So, this was the intention behind the introduction of the western learning by Thomas Babington Macaulay. The next major development relating to education took place in 1854. Wood's Dispatch, Sir Charles Wood. In 1854, the English East India Company appointed a committee under the chairmanship of Sir Charles Wood. This committee popularly known as Wood's Dispatch. This Wood's Dispatch recommended introduction of three universities in Calcutta, Bombay and Madras. These three universities were established in India in 1857. In 1854, English East India Company appointed a committee to further English system of education in India. This committee popularly known as Woods Dispatch. This committee recommended the introduction of three universities in Calcutta, Bombay and Madras and these three universities were founded in 1857. When English system of education was introduced, Thomas Babington Macaulay stated that it was to create a class of Indians which will help the Britishers at the lower levels of administration. English system of learning was introduced, but what happened in actual reality? In reality, once English system of learning was introduced in India, the Indians came into familiarize with the liberal ideals of liberty, nationalism. 
and equality. They were exposed once English system of education was introduced in India, the English educated Indians came into familiarize with the ideas of liberty, nationalism and equality. These educated Indians were also exposed to Italian unification, German unification and the nationalist movement in Turkey. They also came into contact with liberal writings of Rousseau, Montesquieu, and John Milton. For once English system of education was introduced in India, the educated Indians came into know liberty, nationalism and equality, unification of it Italy, Germany and nationalist movement in Turkey. They also came into you know with the liberal ideals of French revolution and the work and certain land certain English educated middle class intelligentsia visited Britain and familiarized with the working of the democratic institutions in Britain. Again with the introduction of the English system of education, it provided a common lingua franco, a common language in India. The people in different parts of India, especially the educated Indians got an opportunity to communicate with each other with the introduction of the English system of learning. It resulted the growth of nationalist feelings among the Indians. For English system of education with what intention did the British introduce English system of learning and what was the effect of the English system of learning in India. Once the English system of learning was introduced, the educated Indians came into contact with the the ideals of French Revolution, liberty, equality, nationalism and German Italian unification, nationalist movement in Turkey. They also came into familiarize with the writings of Rousseau, Montesquieu and John Milton. In addition to that, it also served as a common language. Earlier, there did not have a common language to com communicate from one part of the country to another part. With the introduction of the English system of education, it served as a common language providing the people in pa one parts of India to communicate easily with another part of the country. This was the effect of the English system of learning in India. The next major reason behind the growth of national tendencies among the Indians was influence of historical research. The British contended that Indians had not made any contribution in science and technology and Indians were destined, destined to be administered by foreigners. But the historical researches undertaken by the nationalist historians brought it to light the contributions made by Indians in ancient period, particularly the development of mathematics and astronomy in the Gupta period and the literary merit of Vedic texts and its analysis of the human mind. All these factors were brought to light by the nationalist historians. It proved beyond all doubt and dispute that the glory of India's past was no less significant than ancient Greco-Roman civilizations. It created a new sense of pride among the Indians. Max Muller
a philologist <coughs> who brought to the surface the fact that Indians belonged to the same race to the Britishers belonged. He argued that the Europeans and Indians had a common land in Central Asia, common land where from the Europeans migrated to Europe and another group to Central Asia and from where they reached to India through Iran. Max Muller argued that the Europeans and the Asians had a common land and from there a group went to Europe and another group reached to India through Iran. And he also brought it to light the linguistic similarities between Greek, Persian, Sanskrit and argued that they belonged to a same place and the speakers of these languages came into known as Indo-European language speakers. Max Muller's theory created also pride and self respect that they belonged to the same race to which the British heads belonged. Next reason was socio religious reform movements. Socio religious reform movements. The educated Indians who began to value the evil practices and superstitious beliefs that had been in existence in Indian society and it began to be tested based on the knowledge of European philosophy and science. And these rationalist English educated Indians laid the foundation of a series of socio-religious reform movements. Brahma Samaj, it was a socio-religious reform movement started by Rajara Mohan Roy. Adi Samaj, which was founded in 1875, Swami Dayananda Sarasudhi. Ramakrishna Mission was another socio-reform movement started by Swami Vivekananda. Theosophical Society founded by Madam H. P. Blavatsky and Olcott, Blavatsky and Olcott, who founded Theosophical Society in India. Social religious reform movements also originated among the Muslims, Sikh, and Parsis. One of the important things was that most of these socio religious reform movements drew their inspiration from India's cultural heritage, promoting a pan India feeling and a spirit of nationalism. For socio religious reform movement was another reason behind the growth of nationalist feeling among the Indians. The Indian educated Indians began to test a Hindu society based on the new knowledge, based on western science and philosophy and they questioned the existing evil practices and superstitious beliefs in Hindu society leading to the emergence of a number of socio-religious reform movements 
like a Brahma Samaj, Ari Samaj, Ramakrishna Mission, Theosophical Society and Aligarh movement was a social reform originated among the Muslims, social religious reform was also originated among the Parsis and the Sikh as well. Most of these religious reforms drew their inspiration from India's cultural heritage promoting pan-India feeling and a spirit of nationalism. Racial policy was the next reason behind the development of nationalist tendencies among the Indians. As it has been told earlier, the Britishers thought that they belonged to superior race and Indians to a lower race. Restaurants, hotels and motels were exclusively reserved for the Britishers, where Indians were not admitted. The first class railway compartment was exclusively reserved for the Britishers and Indians were not allowed to enter into first class railway compartment. This kind of discriminative racial policies brought Indians together against the British creating an anti-British attitude among the Indians. Next reason was that economic exploitation. Commercialization of agriculture. Was already stated due to the factory revolution in Europe a number of factories sprang up every duke at the corner of Britain. These factories required raw materials. Britain converted India into a colony for collecting raw materials. And for raw materials, the agricultural field where food grains had been cultivated converted for the cultivation of products such as cotton, tobacco and indigo. These products began to be cultivated extensively across the country. Commercialization of agriculture resulted the reduction of food production in India leading to devastating famines which frequently visited the country. Deindustrialization. As stated earlier, deindustrialization means that decline of the industries in India. In the earlier period, the Britishers bought gold and silver to India for the purchase of Indian manufactured products for its sale in Europe. The difference between the purchasing price and the selling price was the profit of these British traders. But with the acquisition of political power through the battles of Plassey and the battle of Bexar, in 1764 the Britishers got political power and they began to monopolize a trade. With the monopolization of trade, they forced the artisans and the craftsmen to sell the products below the market prices. And with the introduction of factory revolution and the coming up of factories in every nook and corner of Britain, British manufactured Manchester made goods began to be filled with 
Indian markets, these machine made goods were high quality and the prices were low compared to handmade Indian goods. In competition with British manufactured products, the traditional indigenous industries declined and the British government did not take any efforts for the protection of the traditional indigenous industries. Drain of wealth, drain of wealth means that unilateral transfer of funds. Britain drained India and the wealth of the country was transported to Britain. In Britain, India did not receive anything from Britain. It came in known as unilateral transfer of fund or drain of wealth. Wealth of India went to Britain. In return, India did not receive anything from Britain. Famine. Because of the commercialization of agriculture, deindustrialization, and the drain of wealth, famine frequently visited the country. And many famines visited during the period between 1857 1947. More than one crop of people died in these famines. But the British government did not take any effective famine relief measures leading to heavy toll of life. In this background, the nationalist leaders came forward the idea of Sodeshi. The idea of Sodeshi. Sodeshi means that use of indigenously manufactured products and the boycott of imported British manufactured products. The promotion of Sodeshi created a sense of nationalist feeling among the Indians. For the eighth reason behind the growth of nationalist feeling was the economic exploitation followed by the Britishers in India. The economic exploitation would commercialization of agriculture that they began to cultivate only the raw materials like a cotton, jute and a tobacco. Deindustrialization means that it resulted in the decline of the traditional indigenous industries in competition with machine made imported British goods. Drain of wealth means was the transfer, unilateral transfer of fund from India to Britain leading to the frequent visit of famines it resulted a heavy toll of life. In order to protect these traditional indigenous industries, the nationalist leaders brought the idea of Sodeshi and boycotting the British imported manufactured products. It resulted a sense of nationalism among the Indians. Reactionary policies of Lord Lytton was the ninth reason behind the growth of nationalist feeling among the Indians. What were the major reactionary policies of Lord Lipton? One, he reduced the upper age limit for attending the coveted civil service examination from 21 to 19. By reducing the upper age limit from 21 to 19, Lord Lytton aimed to prevent the entrance of the Indians into the coveted civil services examination. It enraged the entire Indians. Second, Delhi Darbar. Delhi Darbar was convened by Lord Lytton in 1877 to declare the Queen of England the Empress of India. Delhi Darbar was conducted with much pomp and show while 
thousands of Indians were dying due to famine. Lord Lytton did not take any effective famine relief measures. While Indians were dying, Delhi Darbar was convened by Lord Lytton to proclaim the Queen of England as the Empress of India. It also enraged Indians. His third reactionary policy was vernacular present. It was passed in 1878. Under the Vernacular Press Act passed by Lord Lytton in 1878, the editors of the Vernacular newspapers were required to enter into a bond with the district magistrate that they would not publish any material creating anti British feeling. If the bond was violated, his press would be confiscated by the district magistrate. Only the vernacular presses were affected by the vernacular press act. Under this act, the editor of the vernacular newspapers were required to enter into a bond with the district administration that they would not publish any material leading to the creation of anti-British feeling. If violated, the press would be confiscated, it affected only the vernacular newspapers. The fourth reactionary policy was Indian Arms Act. It was also published in the same year 1878. Under the Arms Act passed by Lord Lytton in 1878, Indians were required to get a license by paying a license fee for keeping arms, but no such license was required for the Britishers, only the Indians were required to get a license by paying a license fee from the British government to keep Hams. These were the reactionary policies of Lord Lytton. It brought the entire Indians against the British administration in India. Reactionary policies once again include a reduction of upper age limit from 19 to 21, Delhi Darbar which was conducted in 1777 with a great pomp and show while thousands of Indians were dying due to famine. Vernacular Press Act was passed in 1878 to control vernacular newspapers from publishing news creating anti-British feeling. Indian Arms Act required a license issued by the British government for keeping arms and it was made applicable only to Indians. Britishers were exempted from it. No license was required for the Britishers to keep arms. Next reason was that Ilbertville controversy. In eighteen eighty, Lord Lytton was succeeded by Lord Ripon as the next viceroy of India. He remained in office from 1882 to 83. Lord Ripon, once he came into power, he introduced many liberal reforms, including local self government. His one of the prominent reforms was that in judiciary. It came into known as Ilbert Bill. 
this bill was brought to reduce the inequality which had been in existing in judiciary. The Indian magistrates and judges were not allowed to try British or European culprits. Only the British judges and magistrates tried British or European culprits. And in order to take away this disqualification, Ilbert bill was brought under which the Ilbert bill aimed to enable the Indian judges to try European or British culprits. It enraged the Britishers not only in India, but also in Britain. The Britishers strongly argued against the Ilbert bill, pursuant to this Ilbert bill was withdrawn. It created a unity among the Indians against the Britishers. The Ilbert bill thus resulted the development of a feeling of unity among the Indians resulting development of nationalist feelings. Now, these were the reasons behind the growth of nationalist feelings among the Indians. What were the reasons behind the growth of nationalist feelings among the Indians or rise of nationalism in India took place during the British period. Reasons behind the growth of nationalism were introduction of the uniform system development of communication networks such as post, telegraph and railways, introduction of the printing press, educational influence of historical research, socio-religious reform movements, racial policy, economic exploitation of India by the reactionary policies of Lord Lipton and Ilbert Bill controversy, all these resulted the growth of non Indians. Thank you.